how to create a diamond pattern in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CC 220, but you could use 219, 218, etc. Create something like that. Two color diamond pattern design. And I'll quickly show you the size. That's 3000 by 2220. And I'm going to use a source document for the pattern of 1600 by 1600. But of course, you can vary that completely. You don't have to go with those sizes at all. So you can see 1600 by 1600. Now I'm going to use guides in this. So view menu and I'm going to go with a new guide layout. That's initially 2020. That's a bit extreme, but you can use that, of course. 15 by 15, up to you. I'm going to go with 10 and 10. It's a bit easy to see. I think when it gets to 20 or 30, it's very hard to make out where you are in the lines. Too many lines suddenly <laughs> fill in the screen. So click OK. So you've got a 10 by 10 now. What I'm going to use is the pen tool because I want to create a diamond, a very basic diamond design. So pen tool, make certain you've got the shape option and set the color to gray or red or blue. It's up to you. I'm going to go with gray. I'm going to create my first point there at the top that intersection there. And I'm going to go two cells across and I'm going to go four cells down for the center. Four cells down and then cross by two and click again at another point. And I'm going to go down by four cells again. So two cells and then four cells down there. Click and then go across two cells. Let's go up to the middle again and click to the top. And now you've got your diamond design. I'm going to clear the guide. So view menu and clear guides. What I want to then do is create a selection for that diamond. So view menu. Oh, just make sure you've got snap and snap two on guides, etc. I'm going to go for new guide from shape new guides from shape so now with that what i can do is i'm going to create a selection that rectangular marquee tool i can then create a selection around that which i can then define as a pattern so just select from that top guide all the way down there to the bottom you've got your perfect area there selected and i'm also going to remove go to the layers panel that's window and layers. And you can remove the background. Just delete it, go select it, and then go there, click and delete. Yes, I want to get rid of it. Now go over to the edit menu and define pattern and give it a name, etc., and click OK. Now it's still the way in the patterns presets, so you can use it in the other document. So go to back to the other document. You can see the design there. I'm just going to create a fresh start point by using the history panel. Go to the top. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use fill layers. Makes it very flexible. So layer, menu, new fill layer and pattern. Give it a name if you wish and click OK. And set the size the scale. So if you want it 50%, up to you. I'm going to go and set the pattern itself that you've obviously uh, just created. But you can set it to scale 50 or 25. It just makes it easy at 100. So I'm just going to show you it with 100. Click OK. Now I could go and create it again using exactly the same approach, the new fill layer. But you can also just go to firstly up to duplicate layer helps to find it layer menu and duplicate layer click OK so I've got two exactly the same at this point and what I can do then is I can 
got on any of them. The first one, obviously, in this case, and double click it and bring up the pattern fill and then just shift it slightly. Just shift it so you've got the whole screen is filled with grey. As you can see there, you've got your nicely aligned now. Click OK. Now what you can do then, you can turn them into smart objects. Don't, don't have to, but I'm just doing it for this example. The thing about the smart objects, it makes it easier because you can add adjustments to them and recolor them. So it's now converted to a smart object via the land menu, smart object and convert. And also go to image menu, adjustments and hue and saturation. And then just set the colorize on and then change the hue and saturation. Change the lightness. Click OK. And again, go down to the next one. And again, use the layer menu and smart objects and convert to a smart object. And once that's done again, what you can do, image menu and adjustments, and again, hue and saturation. And then just change the settings there, the hue. And the one thing about smart objects is that you can alter them later. So you can always come back to this and change the colors if you wish. So if you don't want those colors, you can change them. So you can just quickly change them like that. You colorize on, of course, lightness, click OK. So you can see the hue and saturation there in the layers panel, and you can just double click on that to change properties. Now with both those selected, both of those layers, go to layer menu and smart objects, convert to smart object. Again, this smart object can be changed. You can double click on the little smart object thumbnail to go into the smart object and change things. So you've got your smart object. And what you can do then is you can go and add adjustments. So image menu adjustments, again, hue and saturation, or maybe one of the others, perfectly reasonable. And then you can change the hue for all of them, both of them. So you can see you can manipulate that, saturation, as well as lightness. Click OK. And again, that can be altered at a later point as well. It's a smart object. So what you can do, edit menu, transform, maybe scale or distort. So you can distort the design. Maybe use warp. You can use filters as well, of course. You've got your design there. No, I'm going to undo. Don't want that. So you can also go to filter menu. You can also go to the 3D menu. Maybe use it for 3D effects as well. So filter menu and liquify, or maybe blur, distort, etc. And you can, of course, then just manipulate that design there. Up to you. And again, the thing is, being a smart object, like I say 3D menu, great, for turn it into a 3D design as well. Smart objects mean you can alter them a later point. So if you want to recolor things, scale things, you can change them. But you've got that lovely diamond pattern very quickly and easily via that. Hope you found this of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always add new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, and many others. Please add some comments, always appreciated. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.